if you can just clarify healthy sexual desire given by God to eventually get married and fulfill all the three things that we started with versus lust. Mm -hmm. How does one navigate that? Because a lot of people walk around with like a guilt that they have this innate sexual desire, but I feel like that's something yeah. within us. So the, the, the church teaches that there are four different expressions of love. And one of them is eros. Eros where we get the word erotic. Yeah. But unfortunately, like so many other beautiful things that have been handed down to us by the church, words get sabotaged very quickly, right? So eros has become erotic and erotic has become something that is um, inappropriate and sinful and filthy and so on and so forth, right? But the word eros was always meant to depict that very specific kind of love that is very passionate, that is very intimate, and that is very relational, right? The human being was given the faculty of being able to express that very specific kind of love, okay? And that kind of love, one of its expressions is expressed in the fact that a husband and wife can come together and share in that intimacy, that deep and profound expression of love that they have for one another. When done within the confines of marriage, husband and wife, when done within the confines of that committed covenantal relationship that we spoke about, then it's always going to lead to something beautiful. And its most ultimate expression is that kind of love will lead to life. That, that's, not, that's not accidental. God intended for this very process of how this specific love of Eros is expressed will ultimately lead to two people being able to bring about life. Let, let me throw out something that might be scandalous for some people. Some of the fathers will even say that the kind of love that moved God to bring about creation. Remember in the liturgy of St. Gregory, you talk about how it is that when God created humanity, he says, it's for the sake of goodness alone that you have brought me into existence when I was not. Those are the words that St. Gregory the theologian uses, right? But what moved God to want to bring about creation? They call it manikos eros. The idea of this what? This crazy love. But the word that is used there is that love eros, that love that out of, for the sake of relationship, for the sake of intimacy, for the sake of that deepest expression of love, God creates from that place. So there is very clearly a beautiful expression of how that love is meant to be able to bring people together and ultimately bring about life. But remove God from the equation like Father Gabriel was saying. And what do you have? Instead of relationship, you have only something that is transactional. It is no longer relational. It is transactional. You offer something, I take it from you, and that's the end of it. When you remove the aspect of intimacy and love, what do you have? Lust. Instead of offering myself, I only desire to take from you. This is why, unfortunately, some people make the mistake of thinking that, oh, once I get married, you've given me license to have sex, so therefore I can do whatever I want. No, hold on. There is such a thing as a lack of chastity even within marriage. Yep. If a husband or a wife decide to abuse their spouse where they only want to take from them, they're not interested in relationship, they're not interested in connection, they're not interested in offering love, they're only interested in taking, 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 taking. It's not because you're married that you're not committing something that is sinful. You've introduced sin into that marriage bed was, which was meant to be undefiled, according to St. Paul. The marriage bed was meant to be a place of intimacy, relationship, connection, and sacrifice. Instead, we've turned it into a place where it's a marketplace, and I get to live out the fantasies that I have been harboring within me for decades. And forgive me, Father, is it not, does it not follow that eat something like the Eucharist, where we eat God's flesh and drink His blood to be one with Him, comes from that same deep love of being within each other desiring to be one just as he gave us to do that with our wives so what's another word that we use for eucharist we use it all the time communion mm. that idea of communion is when two come together when they become one you see this, this is exactly this is why it's so important to understand this and please don't misunderstand what we're saying we're not saying that there's anything sexual about the eucharist actually that that's where i was going to interrupt you I feel like we're so afraid 
of the sexual or the word sex because it's turned into such a dark thing or such a, a filthy thing whereas god meant it as such a holy thing 100%. that is such an example of his love for us that it might be refreshing for the youth or for people in general to understand this really is a beautiful thing that it mimics a relationship with god himself that it's not a filthy thing it's not a perverted thing that it's it's it it models itself on the relationship we have with God, being one with Him in the Eucharist. All things that are good and holy have been granted to us from Him who gave us His very image. Where we would make a mistake is think that what we are trying to say is that this love, this intimacy, this deep desire for relationship and connection, which is all part of sexuality, is only limited to the physical act of sex. Of course not. Nobody's talking about the physical act of sex within God. That's clearly not what we're saying. What we are saying is that sexual faculty, that desire for intimate connection and relationship, is something that we've taken from God because we've even seen Him express it towards us. Hence why the imagery of talking about the bridegroom and the bride. Hence why we even say that one of the titles we give to the Holy Theotokos, we call her what? The bridal chamber. Why do we call her the bridal chamber? Because it is in her that divinity and humanity became one. Mm. This, this union, this, this speaking of how it is that we desire to be one with one another. Now, all of this is taken from our model of wanting to be one with God and God desiring that we choose Him, that we reciprocate the love that He has offered to us. Remove God from the equation, what do you have? Absolute chaos. It becomes destruction of another human being, and not a deep desire of sacrifice and love and relationship and connection. I think one of the most beautiful things, Father Anthony, that you mentioned is that how God created us out of love, which is the reality of our faith, right? So, so out of His love, life was brought out and when we learn to love like he loves the same happens so we co-create with god right? yeah and that's why god gives us this commandment to co-create with him so i want to emphasize the point again is that as a christian i love like god loves i mean w we have to be uh, very um, realistic with ourselves that, that sometimes we allow the world to creep in, right? And we start to redefine love as the world defines love, right? So when we find someone that is 14, a 14 year old is dating, what, why are you dating? I mean, so we date for the purpose, as Christians, we date for the purpose of marriage. You're not ready to be married. What are you doing? Right? Oh, but, 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 I, but I love her. No, no. No, you, you don't love her. You like her. Okay, you have emotions for her, and that's very natural at your age. No problem there. But you have to be able to control your emotions, right? And, and when you do so, that will set you on the right path towards holy union with the spouse that you choose at the right time. And it's all done in God. And it's so beautiful. It's, it's, it's gorgeous, right? So. Let us not be hasty, right? I'm talking to youth, you may be high schoolers. Let us not be hasty into finding our partners. Let us, let us wait until we grow, until we find ourselves, we know ourselves, our personalities are developed all in Christ and we, we love him and he's the foundation of our life. And only then am I able to actually choose my spouse because this is the second most important decision I make in my life. Choosing God is number one. Choosing my spice, my spouse is number two. Maybe my spice as well. Salt of numbers. <laughs> so choosing my spouse is number two. Everything else comes after. So again, just learning to love like God loves. This was wonderful. It really was.